in your journey of learning how to solve equations in algebra, you started out with something simple like 2x plus 3 equals 5x minus 2. Uh, maybe then you learn how to use the distributive property, made it a little more complicated, or even how to solve proportions like this. Well, in this video today, you're going to learn how to take it a step further where we're going to be dealing with quadratics, where we're going to have x squared as part of our equation here. And you're going to learn about two techniques involving something called the zero product property and also factoring and how those will help you solve this kind of problem. Let's get it on. So what is the zero product property? Well, simply put, it's if you have two numbers or terms multiplied together and they equal zero, then it tells you that the first term must be zero or the second. And how that's going to play out for us today is our goal is to get it in to some sort of form like this, where we have a set of parentheses multiplied by another set of parentheses. And then all you're going to do is, is you're going to set the first set of parentheses equal to zero. So if I do that over here, I would say x plus five equals zero. If I went ahead and subtracted 5 on both sides, I'm going to get x equals negative 5. So that would be one of our answers right over here, x equals negative 5. And for the second answer, I would do the same thing, x minus 7 equals 0. I would go ahead and add 7 here and add 7 over there, so I get x equals 7, and that would be our second answer. Well, what if we take it a step further and we're given an equation like this, like x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0, well, what we're going to need to do is, in order to get it into this form of something in parentheses times something else equals zero, we're going to have to go ahead and we're going to have to factor this. So I've already gone ahead and put the box in the diamond problem here. And if you remember from uh, the previous videos here, you're going to put the x squared term down here. The number, negative 12, goes up here in the top right. You multiply them together. That's negative 12x squared. The x term is going to go on the bottom. And then what you're going to do is you're going to ask yourself what multiplies to be negative 12, but then adds up to be negative 4. Well, things that multiply to be 12 would be 1 and 12. Uh, it could be 2 and 6, or it could be 3 and 4. Those are the possibilities of numbers that do that. And so in this case here, what's going to work for us will be negative 6x and a positive 2x, because together they multiply to be negative 12x squared and add up to be negative 4x. Go ahead and put them over here back into our, our box. So negative 6x goes in one corner, 2x in the other. And then what we're going to do finally here is we're going to go ahead and say, well, x times x is going to give us x squared. x times 2 would give us 2x. And x times a negative 6 would give us the negative 6x. And the check is negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. Now that we have the length and the width of this box, we can go ahead and put them back over here into our parentheses. So x plus 2 is in one of them, and x minus 6 is in the other. And then once again, to solve this, as you learned already, is we're going to set each one equal to 0. So I'm going to say x plus 2 equals 0, and I'm also going to say x minus 6 equals 0. If I subtract 2 in, on this equation on both sides, I get x equals negative 2. And then over here, if we go ahead and add 6, add 6 here, we get x. Add 6 to the other side, we get 6. So those would be our two answers. So we're using a combination of factoring and the zero product property to solve for x. And so finally, I mean, what does this all mean? Why are we trying to solve this for x? What does it tell us? Well, wait till you see this graph. So what I did is I went to Desmos and I took the, uh, the original equation we were working with was x squared minus 4x minus 12 is 0. And I created two equations out of that. I took the left side of the equation, set it equal to y, and that's this parabola over here. And then I took the right side and also set it equal to y, and that's y equals 0. And in case you did not know this, y equals 0 is right over here. It is the x-axis. So, and if you recall, what we just did is we found the two answers as being negative 2 and positive 6. I graphed those two points right over here, and you'll notice, what are these two points? Well, those two points are known as the x-intercepts. So, if you're wondering, why are we doing this? What's the point? Is by getting these two values here in solving of negative 2 and 6, it basically tells us what the x-intercepts are. 
If you like what you've seen and heard so far, please like, comment, or subscribe. Thank you, and back to the show. Let's go ahead now and take a look at something more complex. Uh, this time we have 10x squared minus x plus 5 equals 7. And hopefully you've noticed already that, wait a minute, this isn't equal to 0. And our goal is, is to take that, do some factoring, get two sets of parentheses multiplied by each other to have them equal 0. So if this isn't equal to 0 here, well, what can we do to 7 to make it 0? Well, simply put, we can just subtract 7 on both sides. So then we're going to wind up with 10x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. And now we're ready to go ahead and factor. So step one on the factoring process in the box and diamond problem method is to put the x squared term down here in the bottom left, put the number up in the top right, multiply them together, and you will wind up with negative 20 and then x squared. Take the x term, which is minus x or minus 1x, so I'm going to put the 1 there, and ask yourself, well, what multiplies to be 20? Well, those pairs of numbers are 1 and 20, uh, 2 and 10, and also 4 and 5. So between those three pairs of choices we have, we're looking for a difference of 1, uh, and then we need one of them to be negative. So it's going to be negative 5x and a positive 4x. You can then at that point go ahead, put them back over here. So I'm just going to put one of them in the lower right-hand box and then one in the upper left. And then let's take a look here. So if you're looking at 10x squared and 4x, what they have in common is not only an x, but they also have a 2. 2 goes into both. So I'm going to say 2x over here. Uh, these two have in common a 5x. And by the way, 5x times 2x is 10x squared. Then 2x times what gives us 4x? Well, that would be a positive 2. And then over here, 5x times what would be negative 1? So our two answers are here. We have our, our, our length and our width. So we'll put the 2x minus 1 in one of these parentheses, and then the 5x plus 2 in the other. So one thing that's a little bit different from the previous problem is it's not just x, but it's 2x or, or 5x. But the process remains the same. So one of them will be 2x minus 1 equals 0. And then the other one is going to be 5x plus 2 equals 0. And it's just going to require an extra step here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So now I get 2x equals 1. And when we divide by 2, we get x equals 1 half. So sometimes you're not going to get a whole number, and, and that's OK. Uh, on this one over here, if we subtract 2 on both sides, subtract 2, subtract 2, we're going to get 5x equals negative 2. And then when we divide by 5 on both sides, we get x equals negative 2 fifths. And once again, it's OK. Sometimes we'll get fractional answers, and that's not a problem. And then, you know, technically we're done here, but just to remind you once again, what this tells us is once we get these answers is I now know the x-intercepts. If I were to graph the equation 10x squared minus x minus 2 equals y, and those x-intercepts would be, one of them would be 1 half comma 0, that would be the coordinate, and the other one would be negative 2 fifths comma 0. Well, that is our, the first of three parts here. You've now learned about the zero product property and factoring, but there's two more videos yet to come, so I hope you stick around for both of them.